Welcome to section 9 of Bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Viridan streptococci, which you can see right here. This scene will be an epic comic book style fight between our venomous villain and a spider warrior. The venomous villain here represents Viridan's streptococci, so venomous for Viridan's. Before we get too far, you should already have noticed the background. Can you see how we've used a lot of purple and blue colors? That's because this is a gram-positive organism. This is a gram stain of streptococci. First off, notice that the organism stains purple, which is why it's a gram-positive organism. Also notice that the bacteria are circular or cocci-shaped, and they form long, continuous chains. For example, you can see that right here. The unique morphology of cocci in chains gives the organism the name streptococci. Notice that this character has a very long and gross-looking tongue. His mouth is also wide open, as if he's ready to eat someone or something. His big tongue and open mouth should help you remember that Viridans streptococci are part of the normal oropharyngeal flora. The venomous villain character is also considered a mutant. Look at his teeth, tongue, and body shape. He's clearly not a human. He even has a special design on his outfit that suggests he's a mutant. So think of this mutant-looking design on his body as representing Streptococcus mutans, which is a member of the Viridans group Streptococci. So, mutant for Streptococcus mutans. He also is a mighty warrior, as you can likely tell by his humongous muscles. So, think of his big muscles as a representation of Streptococcus mitis, which is also a member of the Viridans group Streptococci. So, mighty muscles for Streptococcus mitis. These two members of the Viridans group are important to remember because they cause dental caries. How convenient that this character has a bunch of very prominent, sharp-looking teeth. All of his teeth should help you remember that Streptococcus mitis and Streptococcus mutans cause dental caries. Okay, I think it's time we added a hero to the scene. Here's our spider warrior swinging from the buildings with his trusty webs. His name should help you remember the last member of the Viridans group Streptococci, which is Streptococcus sanguinis. Spider and sanguinis both have the letter S in the word, so this will be our character for Streptococcus sanguinis. The names of each member within the Viridans group is relatively low yield, but we thought we'd include the names anyway, just to make your life that much easier. I showed this overview figure a few slides ago, but I want to point out that all of the specific organisms we just discussed are members of the Viridans group Streptococci, so we haven't included each one on the overview figure. Okay, let's add a bit more vegetation to the image. These aren't ordinary plants, they're alfalfa plants. Alfalfa plants will be our symbol for alpha hemolysis, so alfalfa for alpha hemolysis. It's important to know that Viridans Streptococci are alpha hemolytic. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we discussed in more detail in section 7, which was our video of Listeria monocytogenes. Again, alpha hemolysis looks like this. Notice the partial zone of hemolysis surrounding the colony. So remember, the Viridans group streptococci are alpha hemolytic. Okay, let's return to the image. Notice that the spider warrior is shooting his web at the villain and hitting him directly in the chin. However, the venomous villain isn't phased one bit. That's because his chin is super resistant to spider webs. This part of the scene should help you remember that the Viridans group streptococci are optotion resistant. Chin sounds kind of like optotion, and because the villain's chin isn't phased by the web, he's optotion resistant. This is an image showing resistance and sensitivity to various compounds. You may have seen this in a microbiology lab, but many types of compounds can be absorbed by the white discs you see in the image. For example, right here. Once the disc is saturated with a compound, it can be placed on the growth medium, and then the zone of clearing around the disc gives an indication about whether the organism is sensitive or resistant to the compound. So the bacteria around this disc, right here, are resistant to the compound because there is no clearing around the disc. Likewise, the bacteria around this disc must be sensitive to the compound because there's a lot of clearing around the disc. The optotion test is very similar to what you see in this image. A disc is saturated with optotion, and then the disc is placed on top of the growth media. If a zone of clearing appears around the disc, then the microorganism is optotion sensitive. If there is no clearing, then the organism is optotion resistant. Notice that we can see colonies directly adjacent to this disc right here. So if this were an optotion disc, then the organism here would be optotion resistant. For step one, you need to know that the Viridans group streptococci are optotion resistant. Next, notice that the spider warrior is swinging from building to building with his trusty spider webs. These must be extremely sticky and adhere very well to the walls of the building in order for them to keep him suspended in the air like he's shown in the image. So this spider web that's holding him up represents that Streptococcus sanguinis 
produces compounds known as dextrins. Dextrins are extracellular polysaccharides produced by the organism, and they are very adherent to areas of endothelial trauma. After the trauma occurs, platelets and fibrin are deposited in this region, which acts as a reservoir for bacterial adherence. This is why patients with pre-existing valvular trauma, such as someone who's had a history of rheumatic fever, are especially at risk. So in these patients, the Viridans group streptococci can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. So think of the sticky adherent spiderweb for adherent dextrans. We'll also add some CARS to the scene to reinforce the idea that this can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. The CAR is being crushed to the point where we can see the inside of the CAR. So CAR for endocarditis. We talked about the teeth earlier with regards to dental caries, but the teeth should also help you remember that the Viridans group streptococci can cause endocarditis after dental procedures in patients with pre-existing valvular lesions. This is because the Viridans group streptococci are a part of the normal flora, and during a dental procedure, the bacteria may enter the bloodstream and adhere to the valvular lesion. As we just discussed, the dextrans facilitate adherence to the site of endothelial damage, which is why this is seen in patients with pre-existing valvular lesions. As the venomous villain crushes the car, a sharp metal splinter goes right through his foot. Look how mighty he is. Didn't even phase him. The splinter in his foot is here to help you remember that bacterial endocarditis can cause many symptoms, but one of the high-yield points to keep in mind is that it can cause splinter hemorrhages. This is an image of splinter hemorrhages. As you can see, they are little hemorrhagic spots that are visible on the nail bed. For example, right here. We need some bystanders in the background to witness this epic fight, so we've shown them back here drinking some soda and betting on who will win. You can see them right here. Let's zoom up on this part of the image so we can see what's going on a bit better. The green soda with a bunch of ice cubes represents that the Viridans group streptococci are bile insoluble. Bile is green, so the green soda is a reference to that idea. Also, the insoluble ice cubes in the drink allude to the idea that it is insoluble. So green soda with ice cubes for bile insoluble. Let's return to this image as we review the bile solubility test. The test is performed to help differentiate streptococcus pneumoniae from other alpha hemolytic streptococci, such as the Viridans group streptococci. The test works because bile salts activate an enzyme in strep pneumoniae, which can cause the bacteria to undergo lysis. So in order to perform the test, you place a small drop of bile salts on top of the alpha hemolytic colonies and wait for 30 minutes. So imagine that this is a vial and we're placing bile salts on top of the alpha hemolytic colonies. If the colonies disappear, then they're said to be bile soluble. So let's cross out part of the colony right here on this side, and we'll say that this side of the colony is bile soluble. Alternatively, if the colony remains after 30 minutes, they're said to be bile insoluble. So for example, if this remained after 30 minutes, it would be insoluble. So remember, the Viridans group streptococci are bile insoluble. Also notice that the guys back here are betting on who will win with pennies. The pennies are used to represent penicillin. This is because the treatment for endocarditis caused by the Viridans group streptococci is penicillin G. So pennies for penicillin. Finally, we'll show this venomous villain holding a trident weapon to make him look extra mighty. This trident represents ceftriaxone. This is because ceftriaxone can also be used to treat bacterial endocarditis caused by the Viridans group streptococci. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 29-year-old female presents to the physician due to intermittent fevers for the past four days. She states that she underwent a dental procedure three weeks ago, but did not receive prophylactic antibiotics. She has a history of a pre-existing valvular lesion, which occurred several years ago. Examination of her fingers reveals dark lesions that run vertically underneath the nail beds. How will the causal organism most likely be affected by optotion. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has had intermittent fevers and dark lesions that run vertically underneath the nail beds. This part of the question stem is describing splinter hemorrhages. So fevers and splinter hemorrhages are very suggestive of bacterial endocarditis. Additionally, her history of a pre-existing valvular lesion and a recent dental procedure are strongly suggestive that the causal organism is most likely the Viridans group streptococci. Recall that these organisms are optotion resistant, so they will not be inhibited by a disc of optotion. So in answer to the question, the causal organism will most likely be unaffected by optotion. From the image, you can see that the venomous villain is getting hit in the chin by the spider warrior's web right here, but also notice that it's not phasing him. You can see that the spider web bounced right off of him. So remember, the Viridans group streptococci are optotion resistant.